What we're going to cover in this session is superannuation. In Australia we have the superannuation guarantee contribution which kicks in once an employee earns $450 a month and currently is at a rate of 9% of their gross wages. That's shortly going to rise over the next couple of years to an amount of 15% in order to fund retirement, a major problem for the economy in the next 30, 40 years. The payroll categories, if I click on there, has a section devoted to superannuation. And if I click on the superannuation, it'll tell me that we have the employee additional, the employer additional, the productivity and redundancy superannuations, salary sacrifice, spouse contributions, and also superannuation guarantee. If I click on the superannuation guarantee, it will tell me that the superannuation name is a superannuation guarantee. It also tells me that I've linked the expense account to superannuation and I record the liability in superannuation liability. The contribution type is a superannuation guarantee expense. It's going to appear on the pay advice and it currently equals 9% of gross wages. In future years, as it increases, in order to change that rate, I'll simply click in there and change it. But for the time being, I'm going to leave it at 9%. There is currently no limit to superannuation for most people. However, once your superannuation contribution is more than $25,000 for the year, it cuts out. There is a maximum. In order to have $25,000 a year of superannuation guarantee, you need a salary in excess of a quarter of a million dollars a year which is, I think, probably everyone wishes for. It will kick in once eligible wages of $450 have been paid for the month. In this particular case, if you have somebody earning $400 a week in the first week, they will not get any superannuation. In the second week, their wages will have gone up to $800 for the month. They'll get 9% of that, which is $72. The following week, it will cut back to 9% of their weekly wage. When I'm actually paying the payroll, it calculates for me automatically. And as long as I've got it ticked in the appropriate section of the card file, that will work out. I'll click close and we'll have a look at the card files. And we'll just check one to make sure it's okay. What I'm looking for here in the card list is employees, and the employee I'm going to have a look at is Charlie Charlesworth. If I click on Charlie Charlesworth, it brings up the profile, the card details, the payroll details. If I click on payroll details, and if I then click on superannuation, I'll see in there that superannuation guarantee is clicked. If I then look at the standard pay, it will tell me that the superannuation guarantee is in there and if I look carefully, it will show me that it is a calculated amount being 9% once it reaches $450 for the month. Click OK and the superannuation guarantee will work next time I run a payroll. Also in the superannuation section of the payroll, I'll click back on payroll and in the payroll categories and in the superannuation, I have the salary sacrifice, and also employee additional. We'll now have a look at both of these as some employees may wish to take advantage of the assistance given in these respects. Let's cover salary sacrifice first. If I click on salary sacrifice, it'll open up the salary sacrifice. It will tell me the linked payable account is 21410, my payroll accruals payable. The first thing I will do is make sure that it goes to the correct account. Click on there and it should tell me that 21430 is superannuation liability. I'll click that and say use that account and it changes up there. My salary sacrifices and my salary uh, superannuation guarantee contributions will now go to the same liability account. It is actually a deduction from the wage 
and just needs to be put there for on sending later on. The way that salary sacrifice works, if you take money out of your pre-tax income and send it off for superannuation, you won't get taxed on it. It will be taxed at the superannuation fund at the current rate of 15%. This may, of course, change in future. What most people do is to say it will equal an amount per pay period or a percentage of gross wages. And we can also, at the bottom, get it to kick in once a certain amount of dollars has been paid per pay period. For people on a variable wage, they may say, well, OK, once I've earned $800, put 2% of the excess into my superannuation. In order to do that, I would simply click Equals and make it 2% of the gross wages per pay period. And the limits, I'm going to exclude the first $800 from that calculation. Once I've now paid eight, been paid $800, anything above that will attract the 2%. If you're setting up for a number of employees, all of whom are different and using different ways, you may have to set up different salary sacrifice arrangements for them all. Uh, normally, the number of people whose salary sacrifice is not that great, and it would only normally kick in once people earn a reasonable wage. The maximum amount that can be salary sacrificed, together with the salary guarantee contribution, is 25000 under the age of 55 currently. You may need to check this. I'm not a tax agent. I'm not looking after your company records. Check with your own tax advisor first before proceeding. But generally speaking, that will be the amount. Click OK, and we're now set up. All I have to do now is to go back to the card file. And for Mr. Charlesworth, if he ever gets it, we'll go into Charlie Charlesworth. In his payroll details, in his superannuation, we can now set up a salary sacrifice. Click OK and close. What we're going to look at now is the other form of superannuation that may be beneficial for some people, and that is co-contribution. This is a scheme whereby people on a reasonably low rate of pay can put money out of their after-tax income into superannuation, and the government will double that amount up to an amount of $1,000 at the low end of the scale, up to zero amount once your salary covers a higher amount than that. What those rates currently are, I would check with your tax advisor, but generally speaking, I think it kicks in at around 28,000 up to about 50,000. So if you're on a very low rate of income, say $2,000 a month, and you put aside $1,000 at the moment into out of your after-tax income into superannuation, the government will match it currently each year at a rate of $1,000. All you have to do is to put the money aside. Your superannuation fund will make sure that the government is notified that you've contributed $1,000 out of your own money, and the government will give the superannuation fund a further $1,000 on your account. Probably the best rate of return on an investment I can think of at the moment. Beats most other schemes 100%, however. The only disadvantage, of course, is that you can't get it back until you retire. But when you retire, hopefully you've now got a nice lump sum. Your $1,000 is actually going to accumulate at whatever rate your insurance company does it uh, on $2,000. In order to do that, if we look at payroll categories, and we look at employee additional, not the employer additional, the employee additional. It's a deduction out of your after-tax money. It'll be printed on the pay advice, and we can set it to equal, let's say, $20 per pay period, assuming that we're on a weekly, and the limit will be a limit of $1,000 for the year. 
Now, depends on who you're uh, going to uh, uh, do and how many people you have on there, and depends what rate of pay they have. It's a thousand dollars per year is the maximum for somebody on say about forty-five thousand. Let's say the maximum amount of co-contribution will be five hundred dollars. The maximum amount they would want to pay into this scheme on this basis would be five hundred dollars per year. The other thing I need to do is to connect my linked payable account to the superannuation. 21430 superannuation liability, use that account. There is also a shortcut I can use if I'm setting this up. If I click down the bottom here on the employee, I will have a list of the employees that are on my payroll. All I have to do is to click whichever ones I wish to put on there. Let's say that Charlie Charlesworth, he's getting on a bit and he's desperately saving for his retirement. And let's say Anne Abel as well. Both want to go into the scheme. They're on a reasonably low rate of pay. OK. And click OK. You'll now find that both of them, if we, when we go to the card file, will have employee additional ticked. If I click OK now and I close and I go to the card file, in the cards list, if I look at Anne Abel, in the payroll details, under superannuation, employee additional is ticked for her. And Charles, Charlie Charlesworth would have a similar situation. Click OK. Close. And next time I run the payroll, their wages will have those deductions that we've already set out included in there.